This program is brought to you by District of Columbia Natural Gas, encouraging you to conserve energy by insulating, weather stripping, and using high efficiency gas appliances. Call our conservation hotline at 750-7555 for more information. This is William Nelson, and welcome to Campaign 90, District Cablevision's continuing series of live interviews featuring those candidates seeking the highest office in our city. Once again, we encourage you to participate and join us by dialing 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Tonight, our special guest is Libertarian mayoral candidate, Dr. Nancy Lord. Dr. Lord is a licensed physician and will give us some background a little later on about many of the other activities she participates in. Welcome to our show, Doctor. Hi, how oh, are you great. today? I really believe uh, it would be appropriate for us to start uh, with a little background on yourself, uh, at least for our audience. Were you uh, born right here in the area? Yes, I was raised in the area. I went to high school in Silver Spring, Northwood High School, but I've always considered Washington, D.C. my home. I always came down here when I was in high school and college. In fact, I was gassed at the Justice Department in 1969. I was active in the anti-war and civil rights movements back then. I went to college at University of Maryland, majoring in chemistry, went on to medical school, and came back here after medical school. I've just received my law degree from Georgetown University, and I've been active in a number of political organizations, uh, the Drug Policy Foundation, the National Drug Strategy Network, uh, National Abortion Rights Action League, National Tax Limitation Committee, and the D.C. Coalition for Health. Mm, I mean, that's a mouthful. <laughs> You've been uh, very active. Well, as I mentioned at the top here, uh, you are a libertarian. That's correct. And for the benefit of our viewers, uh, what is the platform of the Libertarian Party, and more importantly, how did you become involved with the party? Okay, I met the libertarians through my work in the uh, drug reform movement. I've always been a libertarian in my heart in that I resent government intrusion into my personal or business affairs. The libertarians are the third largest political party in the country. We stand for liberty and opportunity. We believe that people, if left to their own, will solve their problems a lot better than government. And when government gets too involved, even with the best of intentions, they make things worse because when they intervene, they intervene on the side of the rich and powerful, not on the side of the average hardworking people of our cities and countryside. Well, the fact is, I uh, take a good look at the party now. They believe in no government intervention whatsoever? Well, different people believe different things. Of course, we have some people who would go that far. I am a minimalist. I believe we do need the government for some things. We need to protect people from violent crime. We need to settle disputes. We need to fix the potholes. We need to educate the children. But we don't need to regulate how a hairdresser runs her salon, or what color tablecloths the vendors can have on their stalls, or what size their stalls could be, or what kind of goods they can sell, or what hours they can sell. We don't need to tell uh, a hairdresser she needs four different types of licenses or other types of small businesses. There are so many rules and regulations that if they don't have a K Street lawyer the day they open their doors, they'll never get their businesses off the ground. And it's crippling commerce in the city. Well, I can take it that you're pretty astute. And the fact is you've been in the Washington area for some time. You've seen a lot of changes. What kind of city is Washington today? What, uh, where have we been? Where are we going? Well, Washington is a great city. It's always been a wonderful, wonderful city with a lot of very exciting, well-educated people, a lot of energy. Right now, we're a city in crisis. We have the highest murder rate in the country. We have the highest infant mortality rate. We have the highest school dropout rate. Nearly half of the students who enter school don't graduate. Many of those who do can't even read their diplomas. One out of three of the children in the city live in poverty. And meanwhile, the government can't perform its most basic functions. The potholes go unrepaired. Yeah. Ambulances get lost. You can't even get your car registered. We need to change that. We need a government that's, that works. Well, with that thought in mind, why are you running for mayor? 
Well, that's why. Because I see things in crisis and I'm tired of complaining and I want to do something and I'm willing to put my neck out and say, hey, I'm here and I think I can do the job and give me a chance. You believe that there's too much red tape? Uh, I think I read that in your bio that uh, you believe there's too much bureaucracy and you want to cut the red tape. But what, do you, what do you need to cut? Well, we need to get rid of all the licensing, regulations, restrictions, and high taxes that are crippling small business. Uh, for instance, as I said, my hairdresser needs four different types of licenses. She needs mm -hmm. an owner's permit, a manager's permit, a teacher's permit, and a stylist permit. Mm -hmm. Plus, they came out and told her where, where to put everything in her store. Now, of course, she did it, but there are a number of people who might not have had the resources and might not be able to get open because of that. Or daycare is another example. That's why we have so little daycare, because there are unbelievable regulations. They tell you what kind of toys you can have, and we're moving towards telling people they must have special training to take care of kids. We're talking mm -hmm. with Dr. Nancy Lord, Campaign 90, our mayoral race. Our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Dr. Lord, we have probably one of the worst drug situations right here in Washington, D.C. You say that the war on drugs is counterproductive. Explain. Well, I do not condone the use of drugs. I think that anyone who uses drugs is crazy and very stupid. However, it's real clear that what we're doing now just isn't working and never will. The people who are using drugs are still using them. The people who are selling them are still selling them. Not only are they selling them, but they're shooting each other and anyone else who happens to get in the way. And they're pulling little children into a lethal and frightening criminal enterprise because they know that little boy, if he's arrested, isn't going to be facing the time and isn't going to have the incentive to turn in the dealer who gave him the drugs that he's selling on the corner. Speaking of dealers, just to cut you uh, brief right there, there was an article recently in the papers where it indicated that dealers uh, are just regular people that have a regular salary job and earn up to $24,000 tax-free a year. Now, if that's the case, how do you convince someone who sells drugs and makes approximately $30 an hour to take a job at McDonald's or Burger King as a moonlighting or part-time job making $3.75 an hour? Well, first of all, I think we should have better opportunities than McDonald's or Burger King. We need to bring entrepreneurship back into the city, and some of the economic programs that I've talked about would do that. But we also need to take the profit out of drug dealing. The reason people go do, dr go do selling drugs is because they can make a lot of money at it. A lot of them don't even use drugs, but they're simply doing it because of the money there is to be made. So how are you and going to take the, the profit away? What we need to do is, is something like what Kurt Schmoke of Baltimore has suggested, a controlled and regulated legalization. I don't mean sell to children. I mean something like what we put in place when prohibition was ended in 1933. Prohibition, as I'm sure you, you know, brought many of the same problems that drug prohibition brings today. And then we could put our resources into things that work, things like education, prevention, treatment, and let the communities, the civic associations, the churches, the synagogues, the schools, and the clubs take care of persuading people not to use drugs. Now, now let me understand. If we have a legalization of drugs, this means that I could walk down to my 7-Eleven and, and just get myself whatever I need? Well, there are several different models. That's the one I would propose, but there are other people who suggest a medical model where people would have to go to a doctor and get a prescription for the drug, which would at least take care of the problems such as people with glaucoma who can't even get marijuana, even though it's the most effective pharmaceutic in a medical sense for that condition. Now, being a doctor, of course, you would be rather sensitive to that. Right. You're saying that... Uh, the benefits outweigh the, the harm in terms of Well, in terms of instance. marijuana, definitely. It has some wonderful therapeutic uses which are just not being looked at because we're so busy running after people smoking it to get high. Mm. Well, what about the other drugs like cocaine and uh, how would you go about regulating them? Would they be any different? Would you still be able to go down to your local 7-Eleven and get your... Well, I would recommend liquor stores. I think what we should do is license people to sell it like you do liquor stores and we could set up rules which would change the incentives a little bit. We could prohibit, for instance, sales to minors. And I think focusing the resources on people diverting legal drugs into an illegal market for minors would be a lot easier to catch them than when the whole thing is illegal. You're not going to have a cartel. You're not going to have a whole distribution network just to sell to kids. What you're going to see is people buying it legally and selling it to kids. So if you watch the places where it was being sold, you knew where it was coming from. You knew where it was going. You see a guy running from the liquor store to the local high school four or five times a day on a Friday. You arrest them. You have a chance of catching them. 
and if you could keep drugs out of the hands of minors, you would have a long-term reduction in drug use because most people start using drugs in their teens. 80% of people who use drugs started before they were 21. Now, we're saying that children would be treated a little differently in terms of uh, how they would regulate drugs. In other words, if they went to the store, there would be a mechanism by which they'd have to show ID or whatever. Absolutely, like we have for alcohol, only it would be more rigorously enforced. We put more resources on that. We're talking once again with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate here in Washington, D.C. Our number, once again, is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Doctor, I also have taken a look at your uh, information, and you have a very strong feeling about education here in the city. What's wrong with the public education program here? I think, like many other things, there's too much bureaucracy. I've outlined a five-point plan for education. It would start with decentralizing control, letting the principals and teachers decide what kind of school they are going to run. Then we'd bring choice to the parents and let them decide where their child is going to go to school. The money would follow the kid. Whatever is per spent per capita on a child would go with them to whatever school they chose, and they could go to any school in the city. We provide jitneys, buses, whatever we needed to get each child to whatever school he or she wanted to attend. We're uh, winding up here at the moment for a uh, break coming up, and consequently, I want you to hold that thought because when I come back, I want to talk to you about what we're hearing from teachers and parents on the subject of education. Once again, we'd like you to join us by dialing 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. ago, this 12-year-old thought he was just out having a little fun. Where do you go before things get out of hand? He got help at a youth center. They got help from the United Way. All because the United Way got help from you. The United Way. It brings out the best in all of us. Weekdays on CNN. Information for Life with Sonia Lai. Does it change the ethical issues? Tuesday with Catherine Breyer and Don Miller. Up to the minute news and live updates from Wall Street. The reaction within the San Denis. Then the International Hour, capturing events around the world. Rob Winky and Bernard Shaw. We are going to conduct a live telephone interview with a spokesman for the Army of El Salvador. Information, national news, and world news. All beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern, weekdays on CNN. I really don't know what to say. You're the first in this family to get into college. And we're so proud of you. I can't go, can I? Your mother and I have been over this a million times. Her work, my extra job. We just can't afford to send you. We didn't mean to let you down. I understand. Maybe next year. Me. We cannot continue to deny bright, hard-working students the opportunity of going to college simply because they lack the funds. Please, support the United Negro College Fund and help keep tuition costs down and the dream alive. Jimmy? Yeah? What is help? The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. You're watching District Cablevision's local origination, Channel 24, in the nation's capital. Welcome back. This is uh, William Nelson, Campaign 90, with our candidate, Dr. Nancy Lord. Dr. Lord, before we went to the break, I uh, was talking about, and you were talking about, education here in the city. And what I'm hearing is that uh, teachers can't seem to get any cooperation out of parents, 
while parents say they're not getting any cooperation from local government. My question is, is there a role for government in terms of our public education system here? Well, we have obviously a commitment to provide education for our young people. But with my method, it would become more like the free market because by having the choice in the hands of the parents, the schools would have to learn the lesson of the marketplace, either provide a quality education or go out of business. And they would have to be responsive directly to the parents' needs. Of course, we'd need to do a few more things to help them. For one, I'd like to see alternative certification where people who have skills in another field, say science, business, military, could come in and teach while they get their education credits rather than having to completely interrupt their career, go back to school, and then come into the system. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to see merit pay so good teachers can be rewarded and get rid of tenure so that bad teachers can be replaced. And I think with these systems in place, you would see a quality education. You'd also see a very diverse education. There's been talk about a military school. Calvin Gurley, who was in the race until recently, was talking about a military school. I think that's a great idea. I now, think this why, city does. Why would that does work better than what we've got going because on one school could decide they will be the military school and the, the parents who want to send their kids to military school would send them there I think it would be good also we We're, talk uh, talking with Dr. Nancy Lord you mean to cut you off doctor but the fact is we do have a phone call once again our number is two three four seven nine oh three that's two three four seven nine oh three we have a caller caller you're on the air good evening good my evening my name is Mrs. Parker and I live in Ward 8 uh, my question is um, are you in favor of the Afrocentric curriculum into the public schools? And if so, if elected, how would, do you propose to implement this in, into the schools? Thank you, Carla. You must have read my mind because that was the next thing I was going to say. This is another important thing we need in the schools is the Afrocentric curriculum. With this system in place, where the parents have choice and the teachers have freedom to decide what kind of school they will run, they would have to provide an Afrocentric curriculum because the parents who wanted it would simply send their kid to a school that did provide it. Now, would we have this in every school and it would be something that's regulated by what teachers and faculty members or would the parents have a say so in this? The parents would have a say in it. Now, of course, I think every child should learn about African American leaders and I would, I would send my, school to a ch my child to a school that provided that and I think that most people would, but by giving the teachers free choice they would have to provide what the parents needed. Hmm. Once again, we're with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate for mayor here in Washington, and our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Doctor, I had thought earlier that I had mentioned something on, well, the fact that you are a doctor. We should look at some of the other types of issues facing us. What about abortion? Is uh, there a way that government should continue to intervene in helping uh, the poor in terms of abortion? You mean funding? Yes, I am in favor of funding. I think if a woman is so poor she can't even afford an abortion and she wants one, there is no way that woman can raise a child. So this is an instance in reference to the Libertarian Party in terms of philosophy where government intervention wouldn't be uh, acceptable? Well, I think that you can't single abortion out. If we're paying for everything else, we're paying for every other medical benefit, I don't like to see abortion singled out. and it is one area that I divert with the predominant view of the party on because I do think that someone who needs it, who needs the two hundred dollars that bad, how are you going to stick her with a kid? What kind of a mother will she be? Well, with that thought, should the government in any way be playing a part in helping with the AIDS epidemic here in the, the district? Will we supply support for uh, those who are too poor to seek treatment? Oh, absolutely. I think there are some people we have a responsibility to. I think first we need to free up some of the other types of agencies that used to step into situations like this, churches, charities, civic groups, people like that should have the regulations removed so they can provide. For instance, doctors used to be able to, du to deduct their hourly rate if they gave free help to the poor. Now they can't do that anymore, so doctors don't give time to a free clinic. We need to get those things worked out, but then if there still is someone left, we certainly don't want to see someone dying of AIDS on a park bench. Of course not. I'm not, you know, I would never recommend that. We do have some responsibility. But I think you go a long way between a, a responsibility to help the very poor and sick and desperate and disabled to controlling virtually everything. So when it comes to abortion, then you would be in favor of the 
well, the special pill that's over in uh, France right now. Oh, absolutely. I think that's a tragedy that that pill isn't here, the RU486. I believe so. Uh, because that the companies are so intimidated by right to life, they haven't even developed the tests to get it marketed. Right. Now, would they have the same type of uh, drug that might be available to fight AIDS, but yet it can't come into the... Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. This is the problem, is we've created such voluminous procedures with the FDA that companies don't have the incentive to develop drugs. I used to work for a drug company. I worked for one of the big companies. That's what I did was doing the clinical trials. And if you have a genuinely new drug, it's not worth it. The only drugs that are really a guaranteed uh, win are the Me Too drugs, the drugs that are a copy of something you already know works. The real experimental drugs, unless you invent Tagamet when it was first created, are very risky and the companies stay away. I find it very ironic that we've created all these regulations to get drugs on the market and then we turn around and have formularies where Medicaid only pays for certain drugs, say the cheapest of a class, when all of the drugs would be cheap if the companies didn't have to go through such a rigmarole to get approved. And the other irony is it doesn't keep people safe. It creates a false sense of security. People would be a lot safer if they didn't have the FDA to fall back on and took a look at the package inserts of the drugs that they're getting. We're here live with mayoral candidate Dr. Nancy Lord. Our telephone number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Doctor, we're uh, looking at a host of subjects and I was really thinking about taxes here next. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's something close to your heart. What is the problem with our tax system here in the district? Our taxes are too high and it's all interrelated. Studies have shown that the most important factor in bringing business into an area is tax rate. You can have every other thing, you can all have all kinds of economic development corporations trying to bring business in and if the taxes are higher than anywhere else in the, in the area, the businesses will stay away. We need to reduce tra taxes to bring back some enterprise into this city. What about all um, the development going on here? Now the, well many people feel that the developers that come in here and do all this building are not putting anything back into the city. Well, this is a problem. The developers get huge breaks. I mean, you'd have a, a restaurant wants to put a different type of awning on. They have all sorts of meetings and forms they've got to fill out, and the developers can come along and raise a whole block of historic buildings, and that's okay. There's something wrong with that. I think we need to stop cutting breaks to big developers, but that's typical of government, that when government steps in, they step in on the side of the rich and powerful and not on the side of the average working people, the small businesses, the people that are trying to get ahead and trying to get their piece of the American dream. And getting back to taxes, taxes will go up after this election. And the candidates have already, there's, there's talk of rolling back the property tax reduction that we so grudgingly got earlier on. They've refused to put the furloughs into place. And so you know that as soon as the election's not hanging over their heads anymore, we will get a tax increase. Now I have pledged and I've asked the other candidates to join me in this pledge, and I'm not George Bush because as a libertarian, I am committed to limited government, that I will look for not only to keep taxes where they are, but to actually reduce them. Dave Clark has refused to join me in that pledge. He said he cannot promise that he won't have to raise taxes. Well, I think if somebody says that, they already know they're going to raise taxes. Everyone, or there's an agreement that uh, in order to balance this fiscal budget here in the district, they're going to have to raise taxes. You, you think there's another way to handle this? There's a lot that can be cut. I mean, we have at the, in the Department of Consumer and Regulatory Affairs, which makes all these silly regulations that are making it hard to run a business in the city, there are over 800 employees. I cannot believe we need 800 employees in that department. Oh, so you're saying the, that we need to cut the, the federal pay, oh, excuse at, me, the uh, district payroll. Yes, we need to cut entire departments. There are departments that do the same thing as other departments. Uh, there's special assistance to assistants. There's temporary employees. I, it, there's a lot of things that could be cut. We have a team looking at it right now, and I hope to, within the next few weeks, be bringing out a, a plan for getting this budget under that control. That was going to be my question. What would a Lord administration look at in terms of uh, cuts in the, the district budget? We need to look at every department, every program, and ask ourselves two questions. Number one, does it need to be done? There are things that, that don't have any purpose. For instance, the police vendor squad. They run around. All they do is harass the vendors, prevent people from being vendors or from staying vendors about nonsensical regulations on the color of their tablecloths. I think they should just be cut. We also have a lot of things that are very nice things, but there's no reason the government should be doing them. Things like a nuclear freeze commission. I mean, I think of people who want a nuclear freeze, that's a, a great club, a group that people could, could be part of, but we certainly don't need to fund it with tax money. 
and then we have things that the government may have to do, but we may it may be better if we privatized them, if we contracted them out. Things like repairs of public housing. If we had several different contractors that people could call, then the contractors would have to compete in terms of getting there fast, getting the job done, being reasonably priced, and if they didn't do the job, they could be fired. Meanwhile, by having everybody work for the government, we're stuck with them and they have no incentive to get the job done. We're here with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate here in the district. And our telephone number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. I want to stick with this just a bit because this is a topic I think most of us mm -hmm. like to zero in on. It's where we get our money. The uh, fact is, what about other programs such as child care, uh, social programs uh, that are here in the district? I mean, is that something that's going to be funded by private industry? First of all, child care, I think the government should just stay out of. It would be a nightmare if the government got into child care. We'd have less child care than we do now. They'd have more rules and regulations. You'd have to literally turn your child over to the government to raise or stay home and take care of him yourself because they're going to prohibit a neighbor from watching your kid for a, a small fee if they don't fit all the rules and regulations of how many windows they have. There's nobody better able to decide if a daycare center is safe than the mother. And there was a perfect example of this in Maryland where a woman was not only licensed, but the state was giving out her name, recommending her to people who needed daycare, and she's been accused of molesting little girls. So it doesn't keep people safe. All it does is get in the way. As far as the social programs, we need a different type of social program. It's like if you come upon someone who's fallen in a hole, are you going to send them a Big Mac and a couple of blankets to make them comfortable, mm. or do you send them a rope so they can pull themselves out? I want to send them a rope. I don't think anyone should be on welfare without a plan for coming off that welfare within two years. There's no excuse to pe keep people permanently dependent, permanently unable to do anything for themselves. The only people it benefits is the social work bureaucracy and people who are making very comfortable livings based on other people down there looking up to them for help. We're here with Dr. Nancy Lord, mayoral candidate here in the district. I believe we have a phone call. It's 234-7903, 234-7903. Caller, you're on the air? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Cynthia Myers, and I'm from the southeast section of uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, I would like to know um, if this candidate is to become mayor, and being that she is a white female, and there are predominantly black females running the administration now, how would they be created? Would they be created equally? Uh, would there be some discrepancies? I mean, these are things that black, what concern black women as far as a white administration taking over. Thank you, caller. Oh, of course, everybody would be, would go on their own merits. I, I wouldn't consider this the color of someone's skin in choosing my aides and the people around me. And I would hope that people don't do the same to me. I feel that it's not a matter of whether you're black or white. But whose side you're on? There's not a dime's worth of difference between John Ray and Dave Clark. They're both on the side of big government, big business, and powerful interests. Whereas I'm on the side of the average person, the person who's out there working and struggling to get ahead, the person who's paying these high taxes, the person whose car is getting stuck in these potholes that nobody could get fixed. Let me ask, uh, Doctor, you actually you have a double whammy on you, so to mm -hmm. speak. Uh, not only are you a woman, but you are a white candidate. Uh, let me ask, is it really is this a good time for a woman to be running for mayor in this city? Is this a good time? Uh... Well, I don't really see why it's not a good time. Um, I think in a way being a woman helps because at least people know I'm not part of the establishment. I'm not part of the, you know, white, ma white male elite that's been running things into the ground for too long. Well. The fact is, we're winding down here, we're running to a break in a second. We're here with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate. Our number is 234 7903. That's 234 7903. Stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. This company needs quick decisions. So does yours. This company needs leaders. So does yours. This company needs well-trained people. So does yours. So when this company needs to borrow people from your company... Come on, man, move it out. Let's go, let's go. Remember, they'll always come back better than they were before. Hey, Bill, could we get your approval on this? Be a hero. 
Give your employees the freedom to protect ours. Count on Showtime this summer for Blockbuster Entertainment with 53 wild and crazy parents, 101 dynamic duos, 31 smooches from pooches, 74 classic tunes, and 1,341 punchlines. Exclusive movies like Parenthood, When Harry Met Sally, Turner and Hooch, plus the blockbuster hit Who Framed Roger Rabbit, comedy, family, boxing, music, and plenty of basic ingredients. For countless hours of exclusive entertainment, order Showtime today. We do need one another. Yes, we do. Support the United Black Fund. The United Black Fund is a non-profit organization seeking to meet met, unmet needs of all citizens in the metropolitan area. With 64 member agencies and over 200 non-member agencies, the United Black Fund has sought to lend a helping hand to individuals as well as organizations. The only, only people, people that, that can save us, us for us, us, is us. Support the United Black Fund and show you care. caused millions of dollars in damage to the Statue of Liberty. If it can do that to copper, iron, and steel, just imagine what it's doing to you. back. This is William Nelson and our special guest this evening on Campaign 90 is Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian candidate. Dr. Lord, back from the break, we want to get into your theme, Revitalizing the Economy and Empowering the Poor. Give me some idea. Well, what do you mean by revitalizing the economy here in Washington? Well, a lot of the things I've been talking about, what we've done is created so many rules, regulations, restrictions, licensing, taxes, that business is crippled. Small businesses are having trouble staying in biz business because they simply can't keep up with all the rules and regulations. Uh, I've mentioned the street vendors in, as an example, but it happens to everybody. It's happening to daycare, it's happening to hair salons, restaurants, even small retail stores simply have too much red tape too many silly little rules they have to worry about, forms that have to be filled out. It's making it hard for them to stay in business. We're licensing and restricting small business almost out of existence. And yet if we are ever to reach the point in this city that every DC resident is going to have an equal opportunity to take part in the American dream, small business and entrepreneurship will play a key role. That's always been the best way for anyone, but particularly for the poor and minorities to get ahead, to, is to, to have their own business and be their own boss. You know, doctor, doctor, this sounds very familiar, mm -hmm. uh, very much like the policies of the Reagan and, and Bush era. And I know you explained that you're not George Bush, but uh, those are the same type of policies that have left us with a uh, record number of poor and record number of homeless people on the street. I mean, how is this any different? It's much different because the Republicans have been on the side of big business. I'm talking about the little business. What they did for big business, for instance, they deregulated the savings and loans, but then left the, you know, left the federal deposit insurance, so we now have this huge disaster, and we're going to be paying for the rest of our lives to bail out the savings and loan industry. What I'm talking about is the small business, is looking what can be done to make it easier for the mom-and-pop deli, the mom-and-pop small apartment house. I mean, there's so many regulations with apartments. 30% of the price of a new home is just paying for red tape. Should we keep rent control? No, I think rent control has been a disaster. What's happened is a few people are real lucky and have a rent controlled apartment. Everyone else pays more. They pay a premium because what happens is that rent controlled unit is effectively taken out of the market. Once the people get it, they never move. So you have less of a turnover. You also have dilapidated buildings because the landlords don't have the incentive to fix up their apartments. We'd have a much, we would not pay any more in rent if we got rid of rent control other than the people that would lose their rent controlled apartments. Those of us that don't have rent controlled apartments would probably be paying less rent. We're with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate. Our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Yeah, hi, this is Mike from Northeast. All right. Uh, I'd like to know what Dr. Lord thinks about what they've done to Marion Barry. Thank you, Carla. We were just about to get into that. Yeah, yeah. 
I am outraged by what was done to Marion Barry. No matter how much I may have criticized the way he's run this city, nobody deserved the kind of government intrusion into his life that took place. That to drag up every person he'd ever known for the past five years, pressure them to come forward and testify, every nook and cranny and embarrassing detail of this man's life to bring it up and parade it before national news, it's disgusting, it's absolutely revolting. And I think we all need to get together and raise our voices loud and clear and say no, we will not accept the government doing this to anybody. The uh, federal government should have gotten a little more, well not help, but should have gotten some insight from others. The fact is, they say that uh, Jay Stevens, in mentioning names, uh, didn't even have uh, authorization, to, or did he have authorization to go on and do the sting operation? Well, it's real unclear what the authorization process is. Where do they have to go? You don't need a warrant to do a sting. Now, that's something I think should be implemented, that if somebody wants to do a sting, they should have to get a warrant, just like they need a warrant to search your house. Because what's the difference of searching your house or going and questioning all your friends? And the other thing, what gave them the right to give known dealers amnesty for getting him on a possession charge five years ago? It's frightening. If they could do this to him, they could do it to anybody. Yeah. Once again, we're with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate. The number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Doctor, I want to stick with uh, revitalizing the poor and, uh, or should I say, revitalizing the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the other things that you see that we could implement in terms of making uh, the district government more workable? Mm -hmm. Well, we should decentralize a lot of things. Like, for instance, the potholes. I think if people have a pothole in their Back neighborhood that needs right. to be fixed, mm -hmm. they ought to be able to get a permission from the ANC to fix it themselves and send the government a bill. I mean, not something unreasonable, but they shouldn't have to wait for the government to get around to fixing their potholes. This would also provide you know, small businesses a chance to get started. They could run around fixing the potholes. How would you... Um go about helping the small business person, the uh, Well, in, in addition to getting rid of some of the rules and regulations, I think one thing we could be doing is a revolving loan fund that maybe the government ought to be guaranteeing loans so that people can get a loan to start a business if they have a worthwhile idea but are a little short of funds. This is something we should do. I don't think it's the government's place to be training people to run a business. I think this is something that will take care of itself once you free up small businesses. For instance, another example, getting back to the vendors. This is a good small business. People learn how to, how to trade their goods, how to buy wholesale, how to sell, how to deal with customers, how to keep records. And, you know, Jay, uh, Marriott started out as a street vendor. Mm. Um, and yet they cannot take on an employee without paying an extra bond requirement of $1,000. And they, it makes it impossible for them to take an employee. Now, this is a job people can, could learn from, and it would not be sl slinging burgers at McDonald's. Mm. Once again, we're with Dr. Nancy Lord, mayoral candidate. Our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Uh, my name is Benita. I'm calling from Northwest Washington. Dr. Lord, how will you and your administration address the issue of violent crimes against women in the city? Thank you, caller. Well, what I plan to do is change the way resources are allocated. What we're doing now is allocating too much resources to the war on drugs. And while I couldn't on my own as mayor legalize drugs tomorrow, what I could do is change the way priorities are set in the police department. For instance, we've got 60 percent unsolved homicides, and yet they're running around doing sting operations, buy and busts, reverse buys, informer deals running around after yuppies in a BMW. I think that if we told them, look, forget about it. If you fall over some crack, then by all means arrest the people, but don't go out and look for it. We would have the resources to go after people who committed violence against women. I mean, it's a tragedy that rapists are being let out of jail to make room for drug dealers. Mm -hmm. Who is more of a threat to society, the rapist or the drug dealer? Yeah, that is a question. Um, many women feel that uh, there isn't enough being done. Is there something else you could possibly add to that? in terms of uh, a system in fighting this crime against women? Uh, well, I think that's quite a lot. I mean, if you're putting, we're putting 40% of the people in jail are in jail because of the drug problem. If we free up those resources and redirect them to violent crimes, many of which are against women, I think that would, that would do the trick. Yeah, I don't think we need to set up a special bureaucracy to handle it. I think we just need to make the police department more sensitive to it, make it more of a priority that if a woman reports a threat of violence, that's where the police ought to go, not running after some open-air drug market. If someone calls about domestic violence, that should be a priority. It shouldn't take the police two hours to get there. 
Uh, one reason they're afraid of domestic violence is because that's a very dangerous situation for the police officer. So you have to make sure they have adequate backup, adequate arms, adequate bulletproof vests, whatever they need to get into that situation and resolve it because there, it has been shown that when the police don't come into a domestic violence situation, there is very often is a murder within the next, you know, several months. Somebody does wind up dead. Those are very volatile and very dangerous situations, and they need to be prioritized. We really do need to take a good look at our police force here in the city. We need to mm -hmm. beef it up, you say. We mm -hmm. need to revitalize it. Well, yes. I, I See, I, when I talk about cutting the budget, I don't mean the police and firemen. I think, if anything, we may need more police and firemen. But this is what politicians do. They cut it where it's going to show so that people will accept a tax increase. It's all fi fire firemen first. They fire the people that are providing the services. Well, that's wrong. Leave the police alone. Leave the firemen alone. Cut some of these bureaucrats. Cut some of these $80,000 a year people who just put pe push paper. That's where I'd make the cuts. I think the police department, if anything, needs more resources. Now, the fact is that many of the residents of the district do work for the federal government. I mean, you're going to be putting a lot of people out of their jobs. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to be able to retrain right away? There's no government program for that. Well, for one thing, I've proposed buying some of them out of their contracts, where if they have, say, instead of giving them six months severance pay, I would give them six months pay all at once. So they'd have a little nest egg to either go back to school or start a business or do whatever it is they want to do, and they would also have a chance to empower themselves. I mean, they do have skills. They have office skills. They may know about particular areas, and I think they could transfer those skills into private enterprise. We're with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate for the district. Our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. Doctor, we're going to run to a break right quick, and we'll be right back after these messages. Check two, check. Okay, let's okay. roll. Good evening, I'm Larry King, and tonight we'll spend time with a living legend, Frank Sinatra, Bill Cosby, Kathleen Turner, Stallone. Okay, please hold and have your question ready. Back to the calls, New York, hello. I love you, Larry. Are you a singer who acts or an actor who sings? Great show, everyone. Larry King Live. <laughs> More than just a lot of talk. Weeknights on CNN. I was going to take a job with an engineering firm in New York. I got a better offer. I'm building schools overseas with the Peace Corps. The pace is a little slower than New York, but here I'm getting grassroots experience I couldn't get anywhere else. The way I look at it, the world can wait two years for another 40-story smoked glass high-rise. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Youthquake on teeth. What kind of toothpaste do you use? Youthquake on style. That's the thing what my dad ever wore was... Youthquake on music. Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Millie Vanilli. <laughs> Youthquake on food. It kind of reminds me of those real sick days you have, you know? Weasel! <laughs> Youthquake on problems. You have to be the one to decide, well, I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to get myself together. Youthquake on USA. Watching District Cable Vision's local origination, Channel 24, in the nation's capital. Welcome back. This is William Nelson with mayoral candidate Dr. Nancy Lord. Our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903 if you have questions. We have a caller.
Caller, are you on the air? Hi, my name is Deborah Jackson. I'm from D.C., Northwest area. I would like to know, um, what do you think about the D.C. statehood? Good question. Thank you, Caller. Yeah. I think we do need statehood. It's an important issue. There's some strange ways about the way the 14th Amendment doesn't quite apply here that need to be rectified, and of course we need representation. I am concerned, though, that it's being used as a smokescreen. I mean, let's face it, we're not going to get statehood tomorrow. And even if we did, it won't solve all of our problems. We're still going to have a violence problem. We're still going to have an education problem. We're still going to have a tax problem. And I see a lot of politicians, instead of addressing the problems that they, we have, running around looking for the next publicity stunt for statehood. Well, I wouldn't do that. I think if we get things working right, if we get this city cleaned up, if we clean house and make things work, we can then make a very credible and viable bid for statehood and get it. So the only impediment is the act of our politicians here in the, the city that's holding things back? Is that what you have? Well, there's a lot of impediments. I mean, basically it has to be voted on by Congress. But I don't think that they're going to vote for it when we've got a $95 million deficit. When, we, when they can't even drive around the city because we've got so many potholes and we've got the highest murder rate in the country. Well, the fact is, a lot of people say that if they can make Puerto Rico a state, why can't they make the district a state? Well, they haven't made Puerto Rico a state. In fact, Puerto Rico is something very interesting that maybe we should look at. They don't pay federal income tax. Mm. And I think we should look at that, especially for areas that we need more development, say have some expanded use of enterprise zones and talk to the federal government about reducing the federal taxes in areas of the city that need help. Well, one thing I can say is that many of the people feel that there just seems to be a bias. Uh, if they can even consider someone like, or some country like Puerto Rico, why do they have a problem with the district? And you're saying basically it's our, our, our people that are running it. Is that it? Well, I think it's also that it's a fe it was made as a federal city, that this was, it was designed to be the federal city, and people have trouble letting go of that. But I don't think it's the people. I think it's the government that we've really gotten the city in trouble. And we need to get the government working and functioning well. And once it is, I think we're going to have, they will have a hard time excusing not giving us statehood. Once again, we're with Dr. Nancy Lord, mayor for candidate, or our, our candidate for mayor, <laughs> excuse me. The number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. And we have a caller. You're on the air. Caller? Are Hello. You you're on the air. Uh, my name is Bill, and I live in the northwest section of the city. And I have uh, questions concerning the uh, tax uh, situation, specifically the property tax. How do you propose to uh, control the rising cost of property tax in the city? And mm -hmm. also, what are your feelings about a commuter tax to increase the tax base? Okay. Thank you, caller. Yeah. We shouldn't need a commuter tax. We, what will happen with a commuter tax is we're going to take businesses that are in Washington and maybe their people live outside of Washington and they're just going to move. You know, they'll go put their office in Bethesda. We don't want to do that. We can't afford to do that. What we need to do is reduce the budget enough so that we can manage it without having the property tax go up. And there's plenty of fat that can be cut. There's plenty of fat and there's plenty of lean. Our government is simply doing things that don't need to be done. We've got a boxing commission. We've got a nuclear freeze commission. Um, we've got all sorts of commissions that do various things. Some of them are necessary. But we've only had one boxing match in 20 years. What do we need to be paying for a boxing commission for? Oh, that's a good <laughs> question. Once again, we. Uh, we invite your questions. That's 234-7903. If you have a question for Dr. Lord, it's 234-7903. Doctor, the homeless situation here in Washington. Earlier this week, uh, one of the longtime advocates for the homeless, Mitch Snyder, passed away, actually was uh, laid to rest. What are we going to do? What can we do about the homeless situation? Well, I think, first of all, what the city council did, and I, I, you know, I'm very sad about Mitch Snyder's death, but I still support what the council did with Initiative 17 in terms of the rollback. The problem is that we've done a better job at bringing homeless into the city than we have at bringing business in. We need to get rid of that. I'm not saying we should make them sleep in the streets because that's cruel. Obviously, if someone has no place to stay, they ought to have a roof over their head. But we ought to ask something for it in return. If somebody stays in a shelter in my administration, they will go to work the next day whether it's in a jobs training program, a job search, or just sweeping up the shelter, they will do something to learn a sense of responsibility 
that shelters should be more than a place to flop while they spend the money they make panhandling on drugs and booze. The yeah. fact is I just don't understand why there's such a problem with housing. We, we have all this public housing available and yet we have all these homeless people on the street. What can we do about this housing situation, the well, public housing situation? Well, we could free up the vacant stuff for homesteading. I don't think there's any excuse for the government owning vacant land vacant buildings, vacant units. I think we can homestead them. We can let people buy them real cheap who are willing to live in them. I'm not, I'm not talking about big developers. I'm talking about families, groups of people who might want to take one of these older, older buildings and fix it up. We also need more tenant management and tenant owned housing. If there's a public housing project, if the tenants are given a say in how it's run, it turns the whole place around. Look at what Kimmy Gray's done in Kenilworth Parkside. It's just been wonderful. Things have been like teen pregnancy has gone down, drug use has gone down, welfare's gone down, rent collection's gone up. Because when people are given a say in their place to live, it gives them a whole new outlook. It gives them a sense of pride. It gives them a sense of accomplishment. I went to a conference recently of women who have been involved in tenant management and tenant ownership around the country. And it was a beautiful experience. People were just bursting with pride. I saw women who had been on welfare for 20 years stand up and say, I'm a homeowner now, and talk about multi-million dollar deals to bring in the capital to buy their buildings. Putting together these deals, these were smart women, very intelligent women who had never been given a chance before to do anything. They'd just been handing a welfare check and said, here, this is all you're ever going to be in life. I, it, it brought tears to my eyes. It was really just remarkable, and I'd like to see more of that done here. We're with Dr. Nancy Lord, candidate for mayor here in the district. Our number is 234-7903. We have a caller. Caller, you're on the air. Yes, hello. My name is uh, Herbert Hughes, and uh, I like to fish. And uh, the Anacostia River is so dirty, so I'd like to know how would she clean it up in a uh, hot soon. I, I like to fish real, 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 real good. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, caller. <laughs> Well, I think that neighborhoods and people who want to fish should have property rights in that river and the right to sue anybody that dumps anything in it. Lawsuits will be a much stronger impediment than regulation. Of course, you need some of that, too, in one so area where you do. Is that a biased do. opinion? <laughs> 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 they work. Look at MedMal, what's happened. Doctors are a lot more careful than they were before all these lawsuits. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we may need some regulation. I mean, as far as polluting streams, we just can't allow that. We have another caller. Uh, caller, you're on the air. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Zach Key, and I live in Ward 8. I'm not old enough to vote, but if you are elected, what would you do to increase the development in this ward? I feel that where I live is just as historical as any other part of the city. Thank you, Thank caller. Well, if it is historic, you should have the right to get a historic overlay if you want to preserve the architecture there. But in terms of bringing development in, what I would propose is expanded use of enterprise zones. I'd give people a huge tax break if they want to develop in Anacostia, at the same time being very careful not to gentrify it so much that people lose their places to live because the land values have gotten so high. But we need to bring in more shopping centers, more restaurants, and we need to have more movement between the different wards of the city. People ought to be going from northwest into Anacostia to go out to dinner. There's some areas in there where you, that you get this view of the city that's just gorgeous. You could put some beautiful stores there, maybe even a harbor place like they have in Baltimore. And I'd like to see that happen. I would like to do not only enterprise zones within the district, but as I said earlier, talk to the federal government about reducing their federal taxes as well to get that area of town developed because it is a beautiful, beautiful part of the city. We have a, another caller, I'm told. Caller, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, you're on the air. Yes, hi. My name is Judy. I'm calling from Northwest. Um, I, I think that uh, a commuter tax would be a, a great idea. I mean, you consider the fact someplace like New York City, they make a killing every day getting uh, commuter taxes from people who come from Jersey. And I think the same thing could apply here because the majority of the people who work in Washington or a lot of people come from Maryland and Virginia. And I think we could make a killing and <laughs> uh, it would increase our revenue in a sense. And I just would like to um, hear your ideas about that a little bit more. Thank you, caller. Okay. I think I said earlier that I am not in favor of a commuter tax. We already pay taxes that are higher than 48 states. The problem is not that we're under tax. The government spends too much. 
to give this go to give the government more money when it's already doing all these things that sometimes are just getting in the way is like giving an alcoholic another drink. I mean, we need to start cutting back on the funds going into the government and keep some of the money in the hands of the people. I do want to address this caller's concern about New York. She's right about that. But there's a big difference. There's a lot of things in New York that businesses simply have no choice but to locate near. Manhattan is an island, and they either are on it or they're not. Whereas in our area, there are so many border areas that any company that didn't want to pay the commuter tax could very easily simply move to the other side of the border, whether you're talking about PG County, out in Chevy Chase, in Virginia. We would simply lose a lot of our businesses. Yeah. Once again, we're with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian mayoral candidate. Our number is 234-7903. That's 234-7903. We're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we'll have some other things to discuss with our candidate. We'll be back after these messages. Strings. Branford Marsalis on the horn. Paul Schaefer on keys. Carly Simon on lead. There are a lot of different parts to play in the American Red Cross. Play your part. Doing drugs is like being on top of the world. Everyone says so. Everyone seems to be having one dandy old time. Hey, it's part of growing up. Or is it? Just think about this. Before you go and do something you've never done before, you just better know what you're jumping into. I'm the lucky one. Out of six boys, I'm the one that has a big brother to play with, to study with, to be friends with. I'm the lucky one. I have a one-to-one -one relationship with a boy that's my friend. I think I really make a difference being a part of my little brother's life. If you have as little as four hours every other week to volunteer your time, you can become a big brother. Take on the responsibility, it will become your greatest joy. I see skies of blue and clouds Blessed days, the dark sacred night, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. If you're not recycling, you're throwing it all away. <laughs> Welcome back. Once again, we're with Dr. Nancy Lord, Libertarian candidate for the Office of Mayor here in the district. Dr. Lord, we're winding down our program. We'd like to give you some time for some closing comments. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure being on the show with you, Mr. Nelson. If anyone out there wants to get involved with my campaign, my number is 310-2316. Please call. We'd love to have you aboard. The purpose of this campaign is to change the direction of D.C. government. My opponents are all running with the best of intentions, but they're running in the wrong direction. Their brand of bigger and bigger government and higher and higher taxes is a thing of the past. We need to change that. I am uniquely qualified to be your next mayor. I'm trained in medicine and the law. I've had my own small business for, se for a long time, for many years, and I've worked for many years on the difficult problems that are facing this city. Most importantly, I am the only candidate that truly represents a change from the tired old ways of the past. I am the only candidate who is pledged to cutting taxes, to improving chances for entrepreneurs, and for who has proposed a plan to fix the educational system. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dr. Lord. Thank you for uh, coming down and spending some time with us. Thank you. This has been the sixth in our series of uh, live interviews featuring candidates seeking the office of mayor here in the district. 
We'd like you to join us next week, Friday, which is the 20th of July at 7 p.m., when our guest will be Sharon Pratt-Dixon. And on Monday, the 30th of July at 8 p.m., John Ray will join us. On behalf of District Cablevision, this is William Nelson saying we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. That was This program was brought to you by District of Columbia Natural Gas, encouraging you to conserve energy by insulating, weather stripping, and using high.